News from the Middle East where tensions are flaring. An attack on Israel from Iran is imminent, U.S. intelligence warns. Now, according to Bloomberg News, which first reported the story, the Biden administration believes Iran or its proxies are gearing up to unleash missile strikes on Israel's military and government targets, which would dramatically escalate the six-month war between Israel and Hamas. Now, this revelation follows an attack that killed a top Iranian commander, which Iran blames Israel for. An Israeli airstrike killed three sons of a, Hama, uh, of a Hamas leader in Gaza on Wednesday. The IDF confirmed the attack, which also killed three of the Hamas leader's grandchildren, according to Al Jazeera. Haneya's family members were traveling in a vehicle on the way to an uncle's house to celebrate the first day of Eid al-Fitr when an Israeli drone hit the car, killing all passengers. The sons killed were active Hamas militants. Hania, who is based in Doha, struck a defiant tone following the attack, telling Al Jazeera Arabic that the latest act will not deter Hamas, not even if their families and their homes are targeted. He added, quote, there is no doubt that this criminal enemy is driven by the spirit of revenge and the spirit of murder and bloodshed, and it does not observe any standards or laws. We've seen it violate everything on the land of Gaza. There is a war of ethnic cleansing and genocide. Hania also said Wednesday that Israel's ongoing campaign will not dissuade Hamas from insisting on its demands, which include a permanent ceasefire and a return of displaced Palestinians to their homes. Let's start with the Iran part of this uh, that we talked about at the top. Uh, a lot of concerns that this could drag the U.S. into a much broader conflict. I, I believe it's been reported Iran explicitly saying, do not get involved in this conflict they're about to have with Israel or that the U.S. itself or U.S. targets would become legitimate targets for Iran. Um, that's been reported and that's very concerning. That's World War III territory. Yeah, it's curious why Israel is continuing to kind of pro uh, instigate these provocations and trying to, it seemingly, instigate a broader war. We've had some guests on talking about that and how um, horrible it would be for the U.S. to be drawn in. And so far, Iran has not taken the bait and has been exercising a great deal of restraint. Remember, it, is an, it was a significant violation of uh, international decorum, uh, rule of law, for Israel to bomb a, another sovereign country's um, embassy, a consulate, and in the way that it had done. And so this really does seem to be escalating out of control uh, in ways that are difficult to understand from the U.S. perspective, um, but which seem to be related to um, a kind of, uh, whether it's uh, a domestic political desire to shore oneself up, uh, as Netanyahu has come under so much criticism for not keeping Israel safe on October 7th and for also not securing the release of the hostages and other kinds of geopolitical considerations. Yeah, at some point the Biden administration is going to have to decide, does it really want to invite attacks on more attacks? There's already been U.S. troops killed yep. in the Middle East. Invite more attacks on U.S. citizens, U.S. military infrastructure, that kind of thing. Is that what is that what the White House wants? Is that what they want to stake their re-election on? Um, because I don't think there's an appetite among the Mer American people, um, even even American people who tremendously sympathize with what happened to Israel and think um, Israel's uh, taking out Hamas is uh, perfectly legitimate. Do they want the U.S. to be involved in World War III with Iran over this? And if not, then there has to be either some restraint exercised or forced on Israel by the U.S. government, or at the very least, we wash our hands of it and say we're not continuing to fund them. And y you know, you Israel do what you're going to do, but we don't want to be on the hook for it. Yeah. Moving to the other story, um, the grandchildren, we didn't mention this in the read, but the grandchildren who were killed were ages four, eight, and 10. Um, they were driving with their parents when they were killed uh, by the Israeli military. This act has come under a lot of scrutiny, especially since it follows reporting from last week that Israel uh, has adopted an AI technology uh, called this Lavender Program. There is also another kind of technology, another AI program called Daddy's Home, named as such because it's specifically designed to target alleged combatants when they are at home with their family, seemingly to maximize the civilian casualties that happen along with the intended target. And that really exploded the notion of there being a human shield, right? Exploded the notion of the high casualty, civilian casualty numbers being a consequence of Palestinians being so uniquely depraved that they are intentionally putting their loved ones in harm way. Not harm's Palestinians, way. Hamas. Quite to the contrary, it seems like Israel is targeting, according to this um, reporting by Plus uh, 
972 magazine, intentionally targeting um, Hamas while they are with their families. And this incident in which a 10-year-old, an 8-year-old, and a 4-year-old were killed do seem to be in line with that policy choice. Well, I don't know if they're in line with that policy choice. I don't know if there was a better or more appealing opportunity to take out these terrorists that was that Israel forewent. If they, if it was just as convenient or more convenient or accessible to kill them when they were not with their grandchildren, then fine. But I've, we've not been presented with that. Um, that evidence. It's also important to note, this is from Human Rights Watch, combatants do not have immunity from attacks in their homes and workplaces. However, as with any attack on an otherwise legitimate military target, the attacking force must refrain from attack if it would disproportionately harm the civilian population, including civilian family members of combatants, or be launched in a way that fails to discriminate between combatants and civilians. So again, the ratios here, three kids dying, um, uh, being killed in the course of this assassination when, again, the senior official that is um, senior uh, uh, is the grandfather, Hanya, who wasn't even in um, Gaza at the time. He was in Qatar. Right. But the, uh, the other people, his, ch his sons are Hamas fighters, and they were killed in the strike, along with the kids, which is, of course, very sad and regrettable and a... Not regrettable enough not to do it, it seems. And this is the pattern that, that we are um, no. uh, in. What was so interesting about the 972 story is that it pointed out that at other times, like prior, prior to this era, um, prior to the in implementation of this AI, uh, software, this AI technology, that the choices, there was more conservatism when dealing with lower level targets. So you might have a um, more latitude to have more civilian casualties, the more important the target is. And that makes, it's, it's a horrible moral equation to have to make at any juncture, but you can see the kind of the moral sense behind that kind of decision. And that with the technology, because it became so much easier to identify targets, that equation went out the window. And so enormous civilian casualties are now accepted in the course of um, Israeli targeting, um, even for low-level officials that normally they would have said, this is not important, it's not worth it. Um, it certainly is not worth it to kill all of these civilians for someone who is not that instrumental. And it's worth noting that in a country, uh, sorry, in a certainly can't call it a country, can we? Um, in an area, in an occupied territory um, where Hamas is the form of government, the, the police officers, the garbage collectors, everybody is Hamas, and that was part of the rationale that was used when people uh, were targeted. Um, the pol local police were part of the force that was trying to, was helping with delivering aid, guiding trucks, securing routes into Gaza. And now that we have this new reporting on the flower massacre that CNN has done, really undermining Israeli claims about what happened that day, we see now in retrospect to the justification of we had to shoot these people because they were Hamas. A lot of those people are police officers, et cetera, who were working with um, the, the food aid delivery system to try to direct that aid into Gaza. So I'm not saying that I, I don't have any insight in, into whether exactly how high level these uh, individuals that were killed in this car were, but I think it is not controversial to point out that a 10-year-old, an 8-year-old, and a 4-year-old being caught up in this does seem to be emblematic of a broader pattern that has brought a lot of criticism um, toward Israel over the last uh, month or so. I mean, I think the extent of the all of the casualties, the innocent civilians dead in Gaza is tremendously, tremendously sad. And of course, the immediate swift surrender of Hamas, which attacked Israel and provoked this conflict, would cause that to end. And they refuse to do that. And so this continues to happen until they are all dead or they surrender. As with the end of a 75-year-old occupation. More rising right after this.